Hey guys, my name is Simpsy. How you all doing? Welcome to the start of a brand new series here today on the channel. We're going to be playing on Crusader Kings 3. I've got to say a huge thank you to Paradox Interactive for sending me a free early access code of CK3 and making this Let's Play possible. So a huge thank you to them and their community team. Leave the video a like, subscribe if you're new around here with notifications on. CK3 is going to be taking over the channel for the next couple of weeks so stay tuned for series and let me know other countries you would like me to play as so we're going to start a new game here and we'll go through the starting dates and I'll give you guys a little bit of a taste and a bit of a tease what you can look forward to in CK3 so first up we have the Wrath of the Northmen which is what we're going to be playing here today in 1867 we're going to be playing as Hulfdan White's shirt of the Duke of York, of Jorb Jorvik. So here are some of the interesting characters that you can play in this time period. You can play as Ivar the Boneless, Ivar Ragnarsson, uh, Bjorn Ironside, Sigurd Snake in the Eye, and uh, Earl Alfred there down in Dorset. So, on the 1st of January, 1867, the Wrath of the Northmen. Two years ago, King Aelor of Northumbria threw the great Viking hero Ragnar Lutbruk into a pit of snakes to die. Upon hearing the news, Ragnar's sons set sail for England to avenge their father. The brothers have since established a firm foothold in York and the Isles, and the Anglo-Saxon kings have lost uh, battle after battle. Their future looks bleak indeed. And so, you will lay all of England under Norse rule or vanquish the great heathen army um, from the Anglo-Saxon soil. So we're going to be playing as Hulfdan of Jorvik. I want to be able to unite the entirety of the United Kingdom under our control and Ireland. We could maybe do some little bits of raiding in northern France and look, if my brothers get in my way, Bjorn, Ivar or Sigurd, we can go and deal with that. I'm going to quickly show you guys as well the other timelines. You can also play as any ruler in 1867, which is the whole map. So we've got the great adventures here. Uh, some of the interesting characters we have uh, Rurik of Ruriked, um, the Novgorod. This would be really quite cool. The early Rus over in Russia. We could do a Rurik series. Let me know. Um, there's also some smaller French tribes over here. Uh, the Magna Confederation there. The, Carolingi the Carolingians with Ludwig, Lothar, and basically this civil war that's sort of going on. We've got the fate of England in 1066 with William the Conqueror, uh, King Harold of England, and Harold Heldrada. King Sven, uh, rags to riches as well, and the Iberian sort of crisis here in pieces. Alfonso, Sa uh, King Sancho, and Garcia, you can sort of unify the kingdom of Castile and Lyon. Okay, guys, welcome to the campaign map. Uh, let's get stuck into the Hulfdan of Jorvik series. But before we sort out our armies and our kingdom, I want to show you guys the campaign map because it's absolutely enormous and looks fantastic if I do say so myself so we've got sort of the parchment map here then you zoom in and it sort of changes things up of course in CK3 you can play as any individual faction you want um, you can play as the Emperor of the Byzantines or you can start off as like a lowly Duke and sort of work your way up um, I definitely can see myself doing a lot of series on this because there's so many cool and unique factions uh, We could play as the Byzantines, let me know, maybe even Bulgaria, France, there's uh, so many to choose from Also the map extends down into Africa as well I think there's a couple of cannibal tribes that I heard from Paradox which might be quite fun for a different playthrough uh, All the way over in India and Asia uh, as well yeah, even the Khanates in Mongolia, Mongolia you can play as. So, we currently have Jorvik here. Um, looking at the United Kingdom, it's very split up between Wessex and Mercia. We are currently at war with Northumbria, Mercia and Wessex, which we have to deal with. So we start off with 5k here. So what we want to do is merge all our armies for now. We'll add myself, Hulfdan, into this because I'm assuming he's quite a... Yeah, look at this, 26 command, so he's quite strong. So let's go through our kingdoms and go. Th we'll sort of set ourselves up and then we'll get stuck into the war so we won't unpause. So let's have a look at our lifestyle. So in CK3, you can choose a lifestyle. You're better off choosing it depending on where you want to how you want to play the game particularly, but also you want to try and min-max it as well to your character. So looking at Hulfdan uh, Ragnarsson, uh, he's 
a decent chap. Uh, so he's only got three diplomacy, 21 martial, nine stewardship, eight intrigue, and five learning. We're going to go down the martial route, although uh, it is a legitimate strategy if you want to go down sort of in intrigue and court manipulation and murders and sort of build your way to the top of other kingdoms through shrewd diplomacy rather than fighting. But we are a Viking in uh, the golden age of the Vikings. So we're going to go Marshall here. So this is the skill tree uh, for that. So looking at what we can work with. So strategic focus, we could go down. So Marshall plus three, he's going to be fighting a lot. Um, I don't particularly fight like fighting with my liege lord. However, he's 21. He's got a lot of children, so I, I don't usually have a mind risking him. Sometimes, depending on your play style, it's like a smaller duke. Or if you play like a really, really hard campaign, you're better off not allowing your faction leader from leading from the front. Uh, Martial, greed, chivalrous. Yeah, I think we'll just go with strategic focus there. And we've got this sort of stuff. So we can move down to strategist eventually. There's no point of re-rolling any of this. Unmarried heir. So looking at our family tree, we are the house of... Uh, um, we currently have a fair few children as well. So, Siegfried Hulfdansen, uh, Gudfrid, oh god, these names are going to be the death of me. Say, Saga, um, Ragnar Hulfdansen. So, I've got my brother Ivar, uh, Björn, Uba. And Sigurd. So what's Uber doing? Can I invite him to my court? I might be able to grant him some titles eventually. That could be an okay idea. So we've got an unmarried heir. So we're going to sort by rank. Um, so who should we marry him off to? So the chieftain of Orkney. Um, hmm, Leon. Isle of Man. Are there any one of... We've already got an alliance with my brothers. That's the thing. Because that's going to stay secure for now. You can actually fight them pretty, pretty early on. Um, like, you can go fight your brothers, which I don't particularly want to do. So, maybe getting a potential alliance with the chieftain of Orkney uh, might not be a bad idea. Chieftain of Shetland. Shetland! Um... We'll just go with that then. So we'll marry that off. So looking at our issues, increase opinion. Um, we That's a suggestion, so we don't want to do that just yet. So uh, not endorsed by our uh, priest, I guess. So we'll send... Yeah, so... Hol hof oh, God. I'm so sorry, Paradox Interactive. I'm butchering your language. I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> so we'll send a gift. Uh, declare wars. Now, you can declare war on the petty kingdom... And Alba there. So we can look at that in a second. Okay, so uh, your half brother Uber, we can marry him off. Um, sure, let's just go by rank as well. So we'll just try and get some of these guys married off. My son, um, I don't want to be drawn into a Leon war. So we'll go with Shetland. Um, Isle of Man's fine. And my daughter. So this might be a decent proposition. So, uh, over in Pomerania, we can marry off to the High Chieftain. The problem is with CK2, if you go and like marry off your people to far away lands, you might have to go in and sometimes help. I think they're far enough away for really me to to be a bit of a problem. So where are they? Okay, so they're here in sort of like Prussia. Um, hmm. East Frankia. We don't particularly want to be drawn into those type of wars. Maybe marrying to one of my siblings. Just securing our alliance might not be a bad idea. Okay, just had a quick look around. Um, Bjorn doesn't have any direct descendants that we can marry into. Neither does my brother Sigurd. We're going to go and negotiate with my brother Ivar. So he has a son who's 29. We should be able to arrange a marriage between his son and my daughter. So we can maybe potentially get his island land. He's got Dublin or Dublin and also West uh, Scotland there as well. So we shall send that proposal off.
Okay, well, let's start slowly working down through our realm and military. So, domain-wise, three out of three, that's fine. Uh, my vassalage isn't too bad either, and my succession seems secure. Military-wise, let's raise all army if no one's completely hasn't been mobilized. We could very well uh, create some more regiments, but I think we'll we'll wait for that because it does cost a little bit of an investment. We're only making three gold a turn and that could bring that down quite a bit. We do have 5k here, which is quite a lot, so we don't particularly need to worry about that. Council-wise as well, so the Duchess is my queen. Uh, looking at our counselor here. So, what I like to do is sort by ascending there. So, 10. So, there's no point in moving him out. Okay, so, religious relations, convert faith in county, fabricate a claim. Um, we're going to be fighting in and around England, which we already have set claims to. So, we don't particularly need to be doing that overly too much. Uh, maybe potentially converting the religious faith is probably not a bad idea. Okay, and let's have a look at you. Is there anyone else here who's better quality? You're 11, no. So, we'll try and keep them in. We don't particularly want to try and fire counsellors if we can avoid it. Unless you're either, like, doubling... Um, your appointees, I guess. Foreign affairs, domestic affairs, um, increased vassal opinion. Yes, let's just do that then in your Vic. Okay, so he's only nine here. So is there someone a bit better? Ten as well. And I think collecting taxes in your Vic is probably the play. Okay, Marshall is only a 7. Surely there must be a better quality Marshall. We are Vikings. So we can allow Uber, my brother, Uber Ragnarsson, to be my Marshall um, and bring away Mayor Hulston. Uh, I think I'm going to go with my brother Uber and assign him to the Marshall. He seems to be a part of my faction, so that's quite cool. Um... So, Spymaster as well. Uh, let's have a look here. 19. Woo! My son. Hulfdansen. So, which one is this? Oh, it's actually my second born son. Hmm. He's quite shrewd. Uh, that's actually quite a lot. 13 on 19. So, let's swap and bring in my son there. Uh, so, with Uber, um, I'm going to get him to organize the levies. And with my spy master, I want, uh, finding secrets might be a good idea because the thing is, we've got a lot of external sort of threats. We've got plots and intrigue. We've got a lot of, when you have a lot of family members, that can cause problems. Um, so let's try and find secrets out in Jorvik. So our council's now done. Court wise, we need a physician. Um, we probably can try and do that eventually. Yeah. You're not commanding an army. Maybe I need to give the command to him then. So if I... Oh, I am... Oh, no. Uber's commanding it. I might change that out, actually. Right. Now I'm commanding the army. Search for a physician. 12 months available. So it's still a little bit away before we can do that. Intrigue-wise, faction-wise, we're fine. Decisions... So, here are some of the decisions. Find, uh, found a holy order, consecrated bloodline, strengthen bloodlines, found a new kingdom, restore Dane law. So, depending on sort of major factions, they have this sort of um, major decisions. I think the Byzantines have like restore the Roman Empire, which is quite cool. Invite champions in, at least three able bodied men, uh, and then invite other claimants. No, I don't particularly want to do that, but we'll invite some champions there. We might as well spend that. Uh, and then there's all other stuff as well. So we can go on a, a hunt and a feast. So I think we've sort of gone through down all this. We can actually have some military action now. Okay, so I think I've set myself good enough. We're probably re nearly ready to unpause. So, wars-wise, the sons of uh, Ragnarothbruck invasion of Northumbria. And that is bringing in Mercia and Wessex. So what we want to try and do is try to take Northumbria as quickly as possible. We want to try and avoid... Um, 
Ivar's host because we can fight it um, if we want to. So we don't want to. So let's push up to um, Dunholm. So we'll do that with Hulstan. Um, I'm just going to show Ragnar. Yeah, Ragnar Luthbrook. So here's Ragnar. I'm just sort of curious to see his command stats. So his father, Opland. So Hulfdan. Yeah, I was just sort of looking at my other siblings. We'll keep it on three speed and we'll push north and try and seize the castles in Northumbria. The quicker we can get rid of Ila, uh, the better. So, um, so that pauses when a notification comes up. Sweet. So, alliance formed. Greetings, Jarl Hulfdan of Jorvik. I gladly accept your marriage proposal. Fantastic. And same with Orkney. That's all been accepted. Um, alliance formed. Jarl Ivar. I gladly accept your marriage proposal between your daughter and my son. Ah, good. So we have closer ties with my brother Ivar. Um, I gladly accept your, your brother Uber and my daughter as well. Okay. So now that's moved out of the way, that army, because we don't want to fight them. Okay. Right. So now that we're at the castle, we don't need 5,000 to take it. So what we're going to do is station the besiegers there in... It's like Dun... It's, um... Uh, what's it? What's the modern days at Durham? I think that's what it is. Dunholm. So, we'll keep a small army. Hang on. No, that needs to. So, station besiegers. Then move the 3k out. Because we want to try and intercept this 800 from Bebenburg. And then we want to try and take the capital as well. We'll keep an eye on the south. Um, this is when you zoom in too much. You can get caught sometimes. So, we'll push into uh, Dunholm. Uh, we're actually going to fight this 800 here for the first battle in the north. And so far, we seem to be winning <laughs> against a leper by the look of it. Okay, so we'll continue to siege out Bebenbur. We'll station the besiegers and we'll move to the next castle as well. Sometimes if you can take the capital, you can capture the royal family of the holding and get rid of them. So we'll move there as well. I don't particularly want to overextend too much. Oh, what's this? Oh, it looks like my brother Bjorn has sent 1.3k to come and help us out. Fantastic. So holding up in this three triangles is probably the best. We don't want to overextend too much. But it looks like Ivar and Bjorn are coming out to help. We need to keep an eye on Leeds, Jorvik. 600 there. Okay, so let's have a look at this battle. So the Battle of Bernica. Um, so we had 3.5k against their 600. So yeah, a clear victory if I do so. All right, let's unpause. So if they do start making... Uh, Dear Father, despite our best efforts, my agents have yet to uncover any secrets here at court. I do not believe we will ever find anything either. There is less going on here than a graveyard. <laughs> at noon! <laughs> Good job, my brother. Or oh, son, rather. Uh, very well. You know best. Good. So, I was probably being more overcautious than what I necessarily needed to be. So, maybe support my schemes if I ever bring any up in the future. Okay, so it looks like they are sending a small army to Jorvik. If it starts sieging it, we'll swing down and help out. But at the moment, we're still besieging there. Um, we'll see how they go. Okay, so they're actually starting to besiege Jorvik here. So, we'll swing down this army to go down and deal with it. We do outnumber them four to one, so it should be enough. Uh, what I could do is station the besiegers there and go back, ideally. We can't allow Jorvik to fall. Let's merge the armies. I'll give the command to Uber, um, so he's out of his command post. Well, his council post, rather. So push down to Jorvik. We're 28%. 
We're still slowly but surely taking territory. I hope this isn't a bait down south. Oh, they seem to be running now anyway. If we can engage them in the open field, we might be lucky. So, yep, so Uber, my brother, is engaging the leper once more. Earl Saxrid of um, Cumbria. 2.3k. Looks like they got some small reinforcements. But we should be able to beat them on the open plains. And let's swing back up north where we can. Oh, we've been intercepted here by another 700. Okay, this is sitting idly by. So that can go here. Once that 700 is gone, that should rocket it up a bit. No, it's still only 67. So we've won two victories back to back. What's really bringing us down? Still can't enforce demands just yet. We're winning the majority of our battles, which is fantastic. But, we, yeah, just because we can't seem to take their capital two months left before we can do that. But it looks like it's only inevitable that Northumbria is going to fall. Let's merge the armies there. Oh, we've taken the capital here now. And surely they're about to fall. We can't enforce demands just yet, can we? No. Nah. Maybe if we take this in four months. Okay. Okay. Or maybe one of my brothers can take a piece of territory down here. Potentially. Okay. So, this is an example of us fighting each other. So, Ivar is actually fighting me here. The troops have lost a little bit of control, which is annoying. Because I still think relations are quite tense in this period, so... We did, unfortunately, lose that, but we'll swing in down, I guess. Yeah, so Uber's... <laughs> right, so Ivar and Bjorn's forces are fighting each other here. We want to try and get rid of Northumbria before relations sour too much. Seven months left before we can take that. It's 98%. A strategic impasse. I'm sitting around the table with Mayor, Mayor Hulston... Um, discussing the strategy. Right. It is my right to decide the ultimate fate. So, yeah. I know both strategies can help. We just need to take this last town that they seem to be holding out against. Maybe I should speed things up quite a bit. Because we really should have, by this point, wrapped up the war... Right, so we've got a new lifestyle perk. Strategist will go then. Okay, hey, we've hit 100% now as well. Yeah, it's good. We might, I was trying to figure out where we lost that little fight. I, I guess it was when that small Ivor force decided to attack me, but whatever. Okay, so you got a couple of options. Surrender, white piece. We're going to enforce the demands, of course. And we should be able to get a decent amount of territory. So let's do that. Victory, the sons of Ragnar Luthbrook invasion of Northumbria has been successful. So, we've actually managed to kidnap King Ayla to the Lothasum Jarl Hulfdan. Tales of your misdeeds are told from Ireland to Cathay. Cathay, okay. You are much great, you're a much greater foe than I imagined. In order to put this bloodshed to end, I will comply with your demands. So be it. So, we've actually taken now a huge chunk of Northumbria. So, we still are um, at war. So, we'll try and rally up there in Durham. Vengeance. Finally, after all this time, I have the evil, petty king, Ealer of Northumbria, at my mercy. When I heard of my father, Ragnar's death at his hands, I swore I would have my vengeance. And I am a man of my word. Oh, here we go. Oh, how the little piggies will grunt 
when they heard of the old boar's death. Okay, so we've got a couple of options here. I will tear his ribs into a blood eagle. Whoa, dread. Um, lose 50 opinion. This man is yours. Great Odin. Whoa, Odin! <laughs> I have other plans. Um, let's be realistic. Let's tear King Ayla into a blood eagle. <coughs> That's sort of my uh, blood eagle noise. Right, call to war. My dearest brother, I call you to honor our alliance and join me in the invasion of East Anglia. So, it looks like Ivar wants me to help out in his war. Um, sure, I will accept that. There seems to be a small force here that we can deal with once we rally up. Okay, so my domain size is over the limit. So what's exactly over the limit? Okay, the holdings. So we currently have eight out of three. So we're going to have to dish things out a little bit. Which is no biggie. We've got a lot of sons, so we can do that. It's just because we've recently conquered essentially a lot of North Umbria. So let's have a look what we're working with. So my son is going to inherit all my major stuff. I do have my second son, my third, and my fourth. So what I'll do, we've even got Uber that we can give some titles to as well. So let's start off with my second son. Let's try and ground him some titles. So we could give him the Earldom of Cumberland or Northumberland. We'll go with Northumberland. We'll give him Durham as well. We'll, go, we'll start off with two because we need to get rid of uh, another three as well. And I'd rather give my sons two each and then uh, I'll give Uber one. So we'll give my son... Gudfrid, the Earldom of Northumbria, and the Earldom of Dorham will grant those titles. And, yeah, we might even be able to make my brother, uh, Uber, my vassal, because that could work in this as well. Okay, so, it looks like, yeah, so my other son already has some titles here. So, Ragnar Hulfdensen, I'm going to give some more titles to. So, we'll grant him some titles. We'll give him the Earldom of Cumberland and the Earldom of Westmoreland. And I'm also going to give my brother, Uber, who hasn't been landed yet, the Earldom of Lancaster. And that's going to increase my domain size to three. And that should fix that up. Okay, so we're still not endorsed, so we probably should sway now. 58, we'll do that. Uh, Realm will lose land when Vassal dies. And that's to Uber. Yeah, it's because he hasn't got an heir. Uh, you can usurp the petty kingdom of Northumbria. Because there's a small amount left up here. How much does usurp cost? 250 gold. Uh, yeah, 300 prestige. So we can't do that just yet. Call allies to war. Mm. So we can call the Isle of Man, Orkney, and a fair few others. No, we're not going to need them just yet. Powerful vassals demand a council position. No, thank you. And we can modify our hooks as well. This is more important. Let's negotiate some alliances. So let's get an official alliance here with Bjorn and with Uber as well. Okay, well, let's deal with this war to the north. And in the south, uh, minus 56 war score battle loss. Yeah, it's because Wessex, Norwich, and Warwick have a fair few armies there. Yeah, so let's slow things down slightly just in case we get rushed. So we'll, we'll rally up at Durham. And, ah, yes, the official alliance between my brothers. Dear brother, I'm honored by your request. I'll gladly call you an ally. Fantastic, because he's been now landed. So we're going to rally up at Durham, or Durham. We'll merge all the armies, we'll allow Hulfdan to command that. We'll run off this small army here. Hopefully we can try and intercept it. But I will keep an eye on those wars to the south. So, the Battle of Bamborg. 
we should be able to quickly deal with this 200 and then should be able to finish off the last little holdings here in Northumbria, minus 64. Yeah, we just don't have enough military forces just yet, and I haven't had time to reform the army. Maybe in a time of peace we can do this, but yeah. It's just a problem if they start taking territory in the north. As long as we're not too involved, it might be alright. Oh, it looks like it's gone back under Ivar's control, which is fine. So it's still plus 30% before we can finish that off. Minus 68 against this Anglia. Crikey. Okay. So, we can actually create the Duchy of Northumbria. So, we'll do that now then. And we'll move the army to Jorvik. To defend. Because we're probably okay in the north here now. Yeah. There just seems to be a little bit too many there. Mm. I don't know if we're going to be able to win that. Maybe if we could take Mercia. That might be the play. We'll move to Jorvik, first of all. And I'll look at reforging the army. I might just call my allies. Just to help out. The 1% is always good. And if they're already, like... Mostly obliged... Uh, we'll try and get further relations where we can as well. Okay, so there's a really interesting situation unfolding to the south. We could very well have an interception. There's 1.5k getting chase point 3.5. If we were to go down there, it'll take 18 days. 22 that they're going to be there. I think it's too much of a risk. Because I don't want to overextend myself. Because this war looks is not looking very good. We've just lost too many allies. Speaking of that... Um, can we call anyone else in? No. That's alright. Well, we'll reform the army. Um, so let's raise everyone. We're going to recruit, uh, create some men-at-arm regiments. Now, we haven't got catapults or onagers. They're quite effective in sieges. I can't recommend them enough. We could go with some armoured footmen. Uh, so let's create some of those. We don't want to hemorrhage too much into death, so we can increase the army cap there slightly. And now it's only 1.7. So we'll eventually get those guys in as well. So I guess we'll just sort of... We'll hang out in York. We'll see if there's not... Yeah, 4.2k just spawned there. Greetings, uncle. Of course I'll join you in your war. And... It looks like... Another one of my nephews is coming in. And another one. Dear brother. Ivar's coming in to help us out. Okay, so we're just sort of raising our military forces. We are actually losing 1.7 now. Which is something we just need to keep an eye on. Maybe if we can somehow, like, I don't know. It's just going to be tough, isn't it? Merge up again. If they if they start fighting them, there's like a tile over. There's probably no reason why we can't intercept. We'll just have to see. They look like they're bringing the fight to us, though. Okay, now they're just falling back. There's 2k down there. And then another 0.5. Okay, let's push. Okay. So now he's got a decent army here. Yeah, so now we outnumber them 6k, so. Let's rally up. Quickly. Oh. Okay, we've been stopped by a small army, that's a shame. It might have been battered enough, though. So we're essentially letting our allied AIs do most of the work. 4.2k's come in here now. The Battle of Ili. And it looks like Mercy has been taken there. We're swinging it down from 70% here now. So it looks like Ivar and Hulfdan are fighting together. 
And that is a huge chunk of the Mercian Coalition destroyed. Woo! We dropped it down to 20% there. Fantastic. The slaughter at Stamford. And the slaughter at Eli. So, yeah. We smashed a lot of them. Good. The great heathen army is c continuing. It's good form. Yeah, I was thinking of maybe like trying to strike mercy in territory from Jorvik, but we're actually better off just to hang around here and just try and take the... East Anglian territory, so... I'll send a part of my army here. Yeah, I just don't want to split up because they seem to have a lot of stringy forces coming in and around. If we can focus on taking the castle, which will only take five months, we can sit there and allow the AI to sort of do most of the maneuvering. We could split and send some more forces down there. 50% now. We'll, we'll just rapidly push this up. Okay, nothing's being intercepted there. Oh, it's 100%. We can in uh, sue for peace. So, the sons of Ragnar Lothric invasion of East Anglia. Let us enforce the demands there. Oh, only the main British. Oh, yeah, because, yeah. That's it, because we're technically not. Yeah, there we go. So be it. It was technically Ivar we were helping out in that one. So he gets the territory. Well, that sucks. I don't know. Maybe I need to be a little bit quicker on the initiative to do that. Maybe I need to fabricate the next claim against Mercia. But, yeah, if we decline it, we get bad relations with him. And I want to try and keep him as my ally, but then I lose territory. Yeah, it's sort of a lose-lose when it comes up, I guess. But we are heavily reducing Wessex and Mercia's army and, and gold reserve. Apparently we can ransom King Burgred of Mercia for a hundred. We somehow managed to capture him. Well, having him as our political prisoner... Yeah, so he's currently on house arrest. We can throw him in the dungeon. Which gives us worse relations, but it does secure him. I wonder if there's anything we can do with this. Now that we have their king, maybe Mercia might be able to fall quicker. Okay, so let's try and influence the lands in Mercia and try and eventually take it. So, who's the king of Wessex? Alfred. Okay. So, with Mercia, we actually have their king. So, oh, so why is this blocked down? Your armies are raised. Yeah, that makes sense. We'll break them down. Petty King Burgred is your prisoner. Hmm. So, we'll start off by uh, disbanding. Alright, so that should move that away. So he's still our prisoner. We can execute him, and then what happens? His... <laughs> his son, who's zero, becomes of age. Is he a very good commander? Nine, five. I'm just trying to think what we should do. Like, executing is pretty brutal, but we already did that to Ayla. We're already sort of going down that path. I don't particularly want to torture him. We can move to the dungeon. Let's just execute him then. So, 25. All close family members and spouse of the Petty King Burgred. I just fear the consequences of executing someone like this. Because uh, Ela was different. Uh, because we had a blood feud with him, I guess. Look, he's not the most formidable commander anyway. If he was like a 20, that could probably defeat us in the field. I might be happy. I guess I'll just ransom him. To try and get the 100 gold. Greetings, Hulstan. I accept your ransom and hope some way to show you the same hospitality. A good deal. Okay, let's have a quick overview of the UK at the moment. So we've got Alba and the Scots up here. This is what we currently control with Jorvik. My brother Ivar has some decent territory down in East Anglia. And on the border here in Scotland. Mercia, Wessex, Cornwall and Wales have their independence. And, oh, they actually threw him out of... Um, Dublin. Dublin, which is cool. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot about Iceland hanging back up there. Floki doki. And not really too much is changing over here. What's going on in the world as well? Oh, the Umayyad Caliphate is still dealing with Astorius. Whoa, the Byzantines have been fractured slightly, maybe? Yeah. 
Nothing really else is going on over here. All right, so let's have a look at Mercy and what we can deal with. So now the King Burger is gone. So we can straight up war deck if we want to. Invade a kingdom. Whoa, that's a lot of prestige. We can raid for captives, which only costs 50. We can conquer the duchy because for 370. Conquer county for 75. That isn't overly too much. I want to try and keep the pressure in and on Mercy where we can. Uh, we might actually be more better off to fabricate a claim. Like on Warwick or something. Like if I was to fabricate a claim on Warwick. Yeah, we'll fabricate a claim. Two years. That's going to take. But we might be able to have a small, wall against, a small war against them now. It does cost a little bit. But I kind of just want to keep up the pressure on them. That only costs 75. And we can't even do that just yet. Lose... Tw no. No. So that's only Burgred's opinion of me. No. So let's not worry about that. We'll declare war. We'll raise all the army. And we'll go up against Mercia. Okay. Let's bring this down to three then. Can we actually see what they have? Only 80. <laughs> In that defending army. So not much whatsoever. We'll wait for our units to rally up then before we march south. It's going to take 30 days to gather. Okay. And we'll allow Hulfdan to lead it. So we'll push for Cheshire then. My concern is if any other armies come up, though. Yeah, push for the castle. There we go. But it looks like my allies are <laughs> just rip-roaring through the countryside. Uh, God, we can call a lot of allies to come in. Sure. Okay, looks like they're all coming in now. <laughs> the long rest. Oh, his mother's died. Oh, mother. I might be growing, but I've always... Yeah, I was always your child. What am I to do now? Mother Oslog is no more. I'm surprised she lasted this long. Um, who are they at war with? Gwyned. Yeah, I'm going to decline that. I don't want to go to war with them just yet. I just started a war. Nine days left. So it's 18%. Alright. Let's continue on with the initiative. Of taking mercy and lands. Yeah, it's getting to the point here now. We've got so many comfortable forces. Mercy itself has now fallen. Okay. They don't even look like they have much of a standing army anyway. Four units hanging around there. There's little raiders and stuff we need to keep an eye on. But I'm happy to split up into four armies now. Uh, there's a small army in the north. To the Lothasum Jarl Hufdan. Uh, we've been burdened by your oppressive laws. Uh, never. <laughs> I'm not going to grant leniency, so we have to deal with a rebellion. That's fine. It's only 400 anyway. Oh, what's this? Okay, that's a larger force coming in here now. Ericsson. Okay. So we've got a couple of moving parts now coming on. They can now rally up. Yeah, if that 2k roams anywhere near us, that could be an issue. And there's a, there's a minor slave rebellion, or peasant rebellion rather, going further south. I want to try and wrap up this mercy and offensive if we can. Alright, we'll give the command to Uber. We'll send him up here. Because that can cause real problems back at home. We need to keep the pressure on the Mercians. Uh, 
Oh, death till us part. Oh no. My queen has died. How's that happened? How has she been knocked off? Oh no! Yeah, because they took Jorvik. Oh crap. I wasn't expecting that. And three of my courtiers. Oh no. Oh well. I guess I'm single now. High five. Venice. Well, we can enforce this mercy and war done. So we've taken a small chunk there. But at what cost? I lost my wife. Alright, so let's swing back further north. And deal with this rebellion. Oh, they actually took Jorvik quite easily, which I'm surprised. Oh well, you live and learn, I guess. Yep, yeah, so that rebellion's now put down. And we might even be able to finish this one off up here as well. Because this war's been... <laughs> ...protracted more so than any. Yeah, that's the end of them. Good. We'll be able to finally get to a stage. Uh, what's this? Oh, God, Scotland. We'll be able to finally get to a stage where we'll be in a bit of a time of peace. Victory. Sweet. Disband all. We're not at war with anyone. <laughs> we can have a bit of a breather. Okay, so now that we're in a time of peace, let's have a little bit of an overview. Um, I might actually speed things up slightly as well once we unpause. So, unfortunately, <laughs> due to that rebels, uh, we don't have a wife anymore, so we need to get remarried. I've quickly looked around in Europe, in West Francia, Bavaria, some of the major powers, even some of my siblings' kingdoms in Scandinavia and Sweden, Denmark. Um, I can't seem to marry anyone who's of a high ranking, so... Um, the best possible wife I can find is, unfortunately, a lowborn woman, Kara, 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 um, Kara, Kara, okay. Uh, she's quite actually good. She's actually not too bad. She's got 21 marshal. Looking at Jarl uh, Hulfstan, uh, he's ambitious, wrathful, callous, skilled tactician, rough uh, terrain expert, novice hunter, viking, of course, strategist. He's 25, and we need to get her basically into... Um, our spouse at court. So, we shall send the proposal. Now, the consequence of this and the problem with this, Ulfdan does get a 200 minus um, prestige hit, um, which, look, it's not too bad, seeing as we've got 1.3k. Um, I'm kind of tempted to take it. Now, looking at our issues, we can create the Duchy of Lancaster, but I'm not going to do that because it costs quite a bit. And I do have some claims in the works, along with potentially a physician coming in as well. We can take a concubine here, Countess Idil Edhild uh, of Staffordshire. Now, she's my prisoner. Um, I can take her as a concubine, and I guess put down some Anglo-Saxon roots and breed into the local populace. So I'm kind of tempted to do that. Uh, if I can send her a gift... Mm, it's just like once we start spending this stuff, it's only going to reduce by 9 anyway. Um, and she's not going to... I can't really seduce her, can we? No. 0% <laughs> chance of that happening. But that's okay. Um, overall, realm-wise, military... Three, yeah, so we've got 2.8k, so we've still got 3,000. That's still decent enough to have a couple of wars, I think. We'll have a court physician soon. Intrigue, we're still trying to sway Klaus, uh, who is essentially like our priest, uh, our faction priest, our pope, kind of. Uh, major decisions-wise as well, we still want to try and take the entirety of the United Kingdom. Uh, we want to restore Dane law, so that's Jorvik, Lancaster, Anglia, Saxa, Mercia, and we'll start working our way down to that, I guess. Okay, so let's sort of see the situation around the island. So, we've got seven months away before we have a claim on Mercia itself, so... This is how we're going to be able to fabricate stuff. Now, if I was to declare war straight upon... Mercia, we will be breaking a peace because we've just had a quick war against them. So we're gonna have to wait for that. Yeah, three years. 
So that takes a little bit. I forget how long you have to wait for pieces and stuff. Also, guys, please do take into consideration that a lot of you guys are Total War viewers mostly. Um, in Total War, it's a lot easier to expand and conquer and sort of paint the map your color. In CK2, it's a little bit slower, a little bit more methodical. Uh, for example, if we were to take the entirety of the United Kingdom here, what is it, 20, 30 kingdoms? Um, you have to basically go around and take every single one of them, except for when you're, like, taking the kingdom title and stuff. So, for example, in today's episode, we've probably taken, what? We've had three, four wars, potentially, and it's nearly taken us an hour. So it's going to take quite a long time before we bring all of the United Kingdom under my control. I just thought I'd put that out there. So even though we have to wait probably, yeah, a year for that claim to get done on Mercy before we can actually take the kingdom, then it's going to take three more years for peace. So let's actually go around and have a look at what we can sort of attack. So I have no ambition of betraying my brother Ivar just yet, even though he's got East Anglia, uh, he's got a little bit of the border here on Scotland, up in the north, and let's just sort of see what we're working with. So if I was to declare war upon Wessex, um, let's have a look. So if I declare war upon them... They have 1.7, that's good. And are they bringing anyone in on the continent? Uh, also, I kind of, like, you kind of forget that you can, like, be brought in against factions pretty much over Central Europe. For example, um, I didn't fully comprehend that the chiefdom of Telemark was here <laughs> when we were fighting them up here. I just wasn't really thinking about it too much when I got drawn into that war. But yeah, that's where they are. So, Wessex could be a potential option. Um, we don't have enough to fabricate a claim fully over Wessex itself, but we can probably take some small territories and stuff here. That does cost quite a lot. Illustrious three. So maybe if we get some more fame, we can take huger chunks. But one more there, we're probably only going to be able to take one tile. Um, so Wessex, potentially. Good idea. Let's have a look at Cornwall. Ah, Cornwallis. So they are a free and independent kingdom themselves. They've also got a territory down in Brittany. If I was to declare war upon them... Whoa! They were going to bring in all of West Frank here. What? I guess they're a vassal. That's crazy. Uh, okay. Well, that's a thing. Um, if I was to attack Gwynedd, Wales. Okay. 4.4k. That's quite a bit. What was Cornwall's? I didn't actually check their size. 5.5. Similar. Yeah. I think Wessex is because... Yeah, I think going after Wessex is probably the play. Because... They have a smaller army. We've been, we've been fighting them quite a bit. What about Ivar? Earl Ragnar's claims. Ooh. Breaking an alliance, so it's like a bit treacherous. treacherous. Okay, so we've got Stratsklud. Um, let's have a look at them. Stratsklud, I think, is a... I think it's in Thrones of Britannia. That was the name of that one. 3.3k. Um, so it actually looks like the Welsh and the Celtic factions are quite strong. How about Alba? Let's have a look at Scotland in the north. And if I was to go to war with them, 2.5k. And we'd only get one tile there. Yeah, I think going after Wessex is probably the play. But that's what it's going to take in this series. Probably shuffling back and forth against various factions just to be, be a little bit more proactive. Um, and I probably should in hindsight, decline being called into wars. Use my allies to help me, but not get drawn into their wars. Like, I probably went down and helped in East Anglia when I didn't really need to. I probably should have got that for myself, which is a shame. But hey, you live and learn. This is a blind Let's Play. It's been a while since I've played CK... Uh, like... CK2 vanilla, let alone CK3. I usually prefer to play the Game of Thrones mods and the various mods for CK3, so I can't wait until they come out. It's going to be fantastic, um, the modding scene for this. I'm really excited. So, anyway, let's see what we're working with with Wessex. So, King Alfred's there. Um, if we were to declare war upon them, it only cost 75 and they're 1.7k. Let's declare war upon them then. Let's raise all our armies. And we'll wait just a little bit to convalesce. Okay, now we can go. So, to the evil yard Hulfdan, I accept your ransom. Okay. Dear brother, I'm honoured uh, to ally your request. So, okay. So, we'll move down to... Yeah, Colin Chester. Uh, it's a Colchester, maybe? Modern day. Okay. So, not endorsed. Right, the realm priest, that's what he's called. Um, we can create the Duchy of Lancaster, but it's going to cost a bit. Um, we can call in allies to our war, and I'm going to do that straight away. 
because we are fighting Wessex, which can always be a little bit tricky, those slippery Anglo-Saxon buggers. And yeah, I'm happy with all that. Okay, well, let's march south against the Wessex Scourge. And some of our allies are already coming in. Greetings, Jarl Ulfdan. I gladly accept your hand in marriage. Fantastic. So hopefully we can have some more children. And we've got more allies coming in one by one by one. And, oh, we got a court physician, finally. I don't know why I struggle to say that word so much. Physician. This world is full of dangers, even to the Jarl and his court. As per my request, my servants have, inqu my servants have inquired after recommendations. And now they have assembled a few options for me to choose from. Now, this is good because we're actually... Because, like, look, he's got 29 marshals. Excellent. That's insane, like, how good his marshal is. So I'm nearly at a massive disservice if I don't allow him to fight. Normally, you don't want to risk your liege lord like this, but he seems to be quite confident. So I can pay 50. We're losing 3 per turn. We've got 260 in the bank. Um, we shall play, pay for the 50 there. Once we start maybe taking some Wessex territory, we're probably going to be able to pay it back. Okay. So, let's see what we're working with here. So, if I split that off, is there some... Yeah, the Baron of Lund. Maybe taking Lund, Lundinium. We'll just have to say, and make sure no one else sort of circumnav circumnavigates us and flanks us north. So we'll sit here just for now. It's going to take um, a little while before we can take this. Ah, oh, the Queen's pregnant already. Fantastic. Okay, so that's now been taken. So let's push to Middlesex. Okay, so there's already a 9k rotating and hanging about there. And there's a couple of my allied forces further in the north. So, we'll merge up. Okay, so there's 2.9k now. Pushing into Mercia. They look like they're trying to flank around us. If they push into Ivar's territory, I'm not too fast. Okay, so they're going to try and retake this. Uh, greetings, Jarl Hufdan. Oh, here we go. So I've proud. This is the... Um, yeah, I'm assuming the claim on Mercia. I've proud through the documents, both ancient and of less certain... <laughs> Provence. I finally have enough material to make the case that you are the rightful lord of the Eldom of Warwickshire, seeing as Burgred unfortunately insists on being Catholic. I could even argue that you have a claim. So we can present my claim. Yes, all of Mercia will be mine. So hang on. So I just want to read this specifically. So you get an unpressed claim for 10 years. Yes, all of Mercia will be mine. You gain a petty kingdom claim. I'm basically going to go bankrupt. That's a shame. A petty kingdom claim. A earldom. Oh, I really want the petty kingdom. But we're going to go bankrupt. Yeah, because I spent 50 on the court physician. I don't think it's like Europa. Um, Universalis and that it automatically debts you and then you can like pay it back I think it's a little bit more uh, damn because we spent a little while doing that yes yeah, so I didn't realize that it actually costs that much now so I guess we'll take the small claim spend the 80 and we won't go bankrupt it looks like we're gonna have to save a lot more money for that but we should be able to take that and we'll be able to influence the general area so we'll present the claim Okay, let's double back and deal with this. Now, is there some way that we can get this army to group up with me? Because I'm pretty sure that was like a DLC. Yeah. In, like, the original. Yeah, I guess we're going to have to risk it. We'll try and catch them out. Let's go. Oh, now they're starting to move. Oh, and once we get stuck into them... 
it's going to cause a fight. So here we go. The Battle of Colin Kester. It's like Leicester. Leicester bit, like Leicester Bista. So it's Colin. Yeah, Colin Kester. Colin Kester. Bit of a tongue twister, these Anglo Saxon names. But it looks like we've won. A huge victory here, and now it's at 100%. So we're going to be able to enforce the demands. And we've defeated King Alfred of Wessex again. And my domain has been a little bit bi uh, gotten bigger. That's good. Okay. So we have a small little outcropping here down in East Anglia. Fantastic. Let's disband the army because we're not at war with anyone. So it's a little bit annoying having to call everyone in just ever so often. Okay, so my domain size is over limit. She does look very sickly, that woman. Um, I guess I can give it to my firstborn son, because we're going to be him eventually anyway. But it can annoy people more than anything. So we'll do that. That should reduce it. Oh, it's fine. Okay. Because sometimes when they're a little bit younger, it can be a little bit difficult. Um... Ah, uh, my daughter can be remarried. Right. I thought I married her off. Oh, she's got a child. How did he die? Chieftain Bard Iverson of Dublin. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's not good. He got knocked off. So, Dunbar. Um, where are you? Oh, your nephew. Right. So who's this? Oh, it's one of Ivar's sons. Well, Ivar's sons have had a really bad run of it. Look at this! It's actually his last born son. We might even be able to inherit that land in the north. Primary heir. Hmm. His family tree is in a little bit of crisis. I don't particularly want to do any intrigue and fasten it along to us, but... Yeah, but then I could be involved up there through one of my descendants. Hmm. Do I marry into it and support them? Or should I just try and allow their line to die out so it goes to me? Yeah, because that's where... Or, or it's going to go to one of my other brothers. Okay, so I'm not going to help out my nephew. Um, I think maybe allowing their realm to go into a bit of chaos... Might be more beneficial for me. Um, I did find this guy here. I'm going to try and pronounce pronounce it. Horik Bjorn Golfson. <laughs> I love Torgan. Okay, so he is currently yeah. So his father is the Jarl of Hollagund, and he's the second-born son. So. Uh, we'll marry her into the to that, I think. Lispa, quick, and we'll get that. So let's send that off. Get that done with her. Okay, so I just had a quick look around. Uh, for some reason, Stratklut, um, we can declare war upon them and probably take it. There's only 700 of them. Has it changed over? Maybe that's it. No, they're Catholic in Cumbri. Yeah, so King Run Mad of Stratklut. So let's go up there then. Let's declare war upon them. And conquer it straight up. Raise the banners. Um, we'll decline that. Uh, we shall call the allies again. We've actually got allies up near Orkney. And of course, Ivar. We probably can make quick work of this war. Let's move up, guys. We're going to be able to hopefully take some territory in Scotland. More allies joining. Fantastic. I want to be able to zoom in, but there's too many notifications. Ah, here we go. With tired yet blissful smile. Uh, my wife presents me with a perfect little daughter. Who will you become, my child? What shall I call you? Now, 
This is actually our first child in the series, but I have seen in uh, CK sort of CK three when I've been playing you. There's a really cool role of the dice here. So Anna was her randomly generated name. We can name it after her mother. We can name it after my mother, Oslog, which I'm tempted to. An ancestor, and you can re-roll it like this, which is kind of quite cool. A good Viking name. So you can even go through that. It's like Freya, Freja, uh, or maybe a Norse name as well, Cecilia. Um, but I think naming her Oslog is probably the play. So how old Saga... So we've got Ragnar, Dyer, Guthrid, and Siegfried. Okay, so let's uh, call her Oslog. You may grow to be strong and wise, my daughter. So, Oslog. Ah, oh, so Holfdan's son. Ah, oh, it changes because when they're not a son, does it? That's kind of cool. She's quite young at the moment, but looking at our family tree, if I can. Wait, where is it? Uh, here, opened industry tree, the tree. So our line is mostly secure. By this sigil, you shall prevail. 170 renowned. So I've currently got four sons, two daughters, and... Oh, we've also got some grandchildren as well. A grandson and a granddaughter. Eight family members... All of them mostly living. So, what's even up here? Only 700. That's not that much. Okay, so... Everyone's been merged up. We'll station the besiegers. I want to try and get this war quickly wrapped up. There, are, there doesn't even seem to be overly that many of them either. No one's influencing us down in the south. It looks like they're probably going to... route into a position near us. Let's split that again and go to a different castle. And it looks like my brother Ivar is coming out to help in the north. We should be able to make quick work of Stratklut here today. What's this? Oh, a bit of mercy has been taken there. And we'll quickly just rally up here. You never know, a Merc army could come out of nowhere. And smash us. We're about to take the entirety of their territory. And Stratklut is about to be no more. Yep, 100% now. Let's enforce the demands. So be it. Okay, so we've only got technically that small thing. Not most of the south, which is a shame. I thought it would be a lot more than that. Still, an earldom is an earldom. We've taken Glasgow under our control. Yeah, so I guess... I'll give that to my son as well. He can have that because I eventually I'm gonna have to eventually re-roll it all again, but I eventually will play as my son, so that's no biggie. Okay, well, let's just span the army there then. Well, unfortunately on that note, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching episode one of my Crusader Kings 3. Hulfdan Jorvik series. Stay tuned for another hour-long episode coming out tomorrow where we continue to try and conquer the United Kingdom. Wessex, Mercia, Wales all seem to have prominent roles. Who's this? The Kingdom... This looks Viking. What? Ur... Rurik? No way. What are you doing over here? Rurik. Rurikid. Of the Rus. Um. I know you're Norse at this period, but maybe he married. Who is she? Is she Welsh or something? How is he going to take that off the Welsh? I wonder if we take that, will we be able to get territory in Russia? That he's overexpanded so quickly. That's so, so strange. So. Uh, we should be able to go to war with Mercia, so we can continue that war. Wessex and Mercia are still very much on the back foot. Um, it looks like my brother Ivar is doing quite well, and then we we'll guess we'll look to go against them in Alba. But it's 1873. Hulf Hulfdan's line is secure. Ivar's gotten out of prison. Björn, Uber, and Sigurd 
all seem to be doing quite healthy and uh, living up to Ragnar's name. Unfortunately, guys, it is time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know in the comment section down below your feedback for the series. And if you would like to see more, that's the best way to ensure more content. Leave a dislike if you're not enjoying the series. Check out my social media links if you want to stay connected with me. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all in the description below. Patreon and merchandise link in the description below, along with the Steam group. Come and join the community on Steam. And on that note, unfortunately, I have to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching once again. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Go out and have a fantastic rest of your day. My name is Ben Simsy. Goodbye.